Meter readers are a special group of people. Everyone thinks your job is a piece of cake and there are no real hazards to worry about. What could be easier than strolling around and reading meters all day, right? Well, you know better and so do we. Meter readers are very important to the organization. After all, you bring in the revenue that keeps things running and it takes the skills of a professional to work safely. Most people don't realize just how risky meter reading can be as you are exposed to all kinds of hazards such as slips and trips, traffic, weather, aggressive dogs, venomous animals and insects, and of course, the always interesting irate customer. For all your hard work, knowledge, and skills, we want to know that you are appreciated. You know the driving basics, and you've probably heard all the safety driving lectures you'll ever want to hear. However, depending on weather and traffic conditions, driving to and from meter routes can be downright risky. Like most of us, we need an occasional reminder to help keep us safe on the road, so it's important to participate in periodic defensive driving training. Before driving your route, conduct a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle looking for any discrepancy that might create a hazard such as tire condition, malfunctioning lights and flashers, mirrors, or possible damage that might have been left by someone else. Your organization has specific guidelines for a pre- and post-trip inspection, so follow these guidelines. In recent years, technology has provided a lot of great opportunities to enhance productivity and make our lives a bit easier. Two key areas that affect you are automated meter reading and cellular phones. Be sure that your vehicle is set up so your equipment doesn't interfere with your ability to see or drive safely. Yes, you may be tempted to spend time looking at the AMR screen, but your prime objective is safe driving. When parking, always set the emergency brake and if parking on an incline or hill, turn your tires into the curb to prevent movement in case your brakes fail. Some organizations require overhead flashers or placing traffic cones in front or back of the vehicle when parking. In any case, follow your organization's procedures. Cell phones have provided many opportunities to be more productive. However, when driving, be sure that you avoid the use of handheld cell phones, always opting for hands-free equipment instead. You have likely seen the bumper sticker, Hang Up and Drive. Your state may be one of many that have passed laws requiring hands-free devices for cell phones. The key is learning the advanced features on your phone to make driving safer. Of course, we don't have to remind you to avoid the distraction of eating or drinking while driving. Since you tend to walk a lot, you know that proper footwear is of vital importance in order to protect your feet and ankles from uneven terrain, thorns, spines, and even snakes. Take a look at your shoes periodically to evaluate their condition. Gloves and other safety equipment may be required, so wear personal protective equipment when it's needed. Whenever possible, avoid walking or climbing on slippery slopes and hills, and watch for uneven sidewalks or other walking surfaces. So get to know your routes and plan your day accordingly. During winter weather, Use extra care when walking on snow and ice and use devices to gain extra grip or traction to help prevent a fall. While walking your route, keep on the lookout for dogs, traffic, and cars backing out of their driveways and other hazards. There are many things that deserve your attention. As a meter reader, you should be well aware of concerns relating to dogs. Certainly, aggressive dogs can make your life miserable and may be a major risk to your personal safety. You've heard the stories of meter readers having been mauled by dogs, resulting in gruesome injuries or even death. Follow your organization's procedures for reporting unsecured and or aggressive dogs so the owner can be contacted and the dog properly controlled. If bitten, report it immediately so animal control can be contacted and steps taken to determine who owns the animal and if the rabies vaccinations are up to date. After all, you want to avoid having to start a rabies series if at all possible. Be sure you have been trained in the behaviors of aggressive dogs and how to avoid an attack in addition to techniques to protect yourself should an attack occur. Carry the equipment provided to you by your organization to help protect you, such as sprays, umbrellas, or bite sticks. However, your best tool is training and root knowledge. 
Be aware that when you enter a dog's property, you're invading their space. Their job is to get you to leave. Never run when confronted by a threatening dog. Running only stimulates the dog's chase instinct. Hold your ground and demonstrate moderate dominance by telling the dog firmly to go home or some other command such as no and sit or stay and never turn your back on a barking animal. Avoid direct eye contact, which the dog may interpret as a challenge. Instead, appear nonchalant and keep your body posture at an angle to the dog as opposed to a straight-on stance. Aggressive dogs may interpret a straight-on stance as a threat. Without something to chase, the dog may lose interest. When the dog begins to back away, slowly retreat also, keeping the dog in view without paying much direct attention to it. If the dog begins to come back, stop and wait until it moves off again. Never try to pet a strange or free-roaming dog or attempt to touch or pet a dog that is eating or sleeping. If the owner says, my dog will never bite, don't believe it. These are the famous last words of a dog owner just before their dog puts the bite on someone. Always avoid any encounters with guard-trained dogs. Find out if any are patrolling before you walk into a new area. Be prepared to offer a charging dog an alternative target, such as a notebook, jacket, or your meter reading equipment. Never be embarrassed to jump on a car, climb a tree, or call for help if threatened. As a last resort, throw or pretend to throw an object at an aggressive dog. If approached, keep still and try to remain calm. Never scream or run. Children in schools are taught to be a tree, with feet together, elbows against your chest, and hands under your neck, and this is good advice. Let the dog sniff you. In most cases, it will leave as soon as it realizes that you really aren't a threat. Wait until the dog leaves, then slowly back away until it's out of sight. If knocked down, curl into a ball and use your hands to protect your head and neck. We didn't want to make this a dog bite prevention video, but it is an important review. Aggressive dogs are one thing. Aggressive customers are quite another. If you've been reading meters for any length of time, you have heard stories of unsettling encounters with people who are angry with your organization for some reason. Whether it is a shut-off for non-payment or a high water bill, you may end up being the focus of their misplaced anger. Another reason to remain alert at all times. It is best to avoid direct eye contact with anyone who may be watching you perform the shutoff as they may be looking for an opportunity for a confrontation. At the first sign of concern, leave for a safe location, call your supervisor and the police for assistance, and of course, follow your organization's procedures. Above all, leave and get to a safe area fast. Never argue or try to reason with irate customers. Most meter reader vehicles carry a number of hand tools for meter work whether it's shovels, small digging tools, wrenches, screwdrivers, meter lid tools, or any others. So make sure they're in good serviceable condition and inspect them often for signs of wear or damage. Be sure you have been trained in the safe use of your tools and when pumping water out of meter boxes, take care to avoid slipping on any mud or water that has been removed. Depending upon where you live, you may have the potential for exposure to all sorts of unpleasant plants, animals, and insects. Be sure that you have first-hand knowledge of poisonous plants that grow in your area and what they look like. You know what we're talking about. Poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, and others. Poison ivy, oak, and sumac are the most common plants that cause a skin rash. Poison ivy and oak have a similar appearance with three green to reddish shiny leaves at the end of each stalk. Remember the old adage, leaves of three, let it be. Poison sumac is a bit more difficult to identify, so take the time to become familiar with this plant. Once you know your poison plants, avoid contact and seek medical care if there is any indication of itching or a rash. Wearing long shirts, long pants and gloves, or disposable coveralls can help reduce exposure to the oil secreted from these plants. If you do make contact, it's important to wash your skin as soon as possible. 
Symptoms of exposure can range from mild to severe and include itching, redness, burning, swelling, and blisters. Be sure to report any exposure to your supervisor to ensure that you receive prompt medical care. Again, avoidance is your best bet. Your area of the country may have cactus, and it goes without saying to be sure and avoid contact with these painful spines and use hand and eye protection where warranted. While most people are actually more afraid of attacks by larger animals, it is actually insects that are responsible for the most deaths. Bees are responsible for more fatalities than snakes, spiders, and scorpions combined. Meter boxes are a great home for a wide variety of insects such as bees, wasps, ants, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, and many more. If you know that you are hypersensitive, check with your doctor and make sure to carry an emergency sting allergy kit on your person while reading. With today's concern about Africanized honeybees, you just can't be too careful. Unless evaluated under a microscope, there is no way to visually tell the difference between a European and Africanized honeybee. Africanized bees attack in mass and can kill you. There is no way to outrun them or avoid their aggression, so the rule should be simple. Never mess with bees and other stinging insects. If there is any doubt, leave the area and arrange for professional eradication and never try to do so yourself. Some tips to help avoid stings include avoiding using sweet-smelling fragrances found in aftershaves, soap, and perfume as they often attract bees and other insects. Vibration of mowers or other power equipment can stimulate an attack as well. Bees will usually leave their stingers in your skin when you get stung. It's important to remove the stinger as it will continue to pump venom. Remove the stingers with a scraping motion with something such as a credit card or other item with a stiff edge. Trying to pull out stingers by hand squeezes even more venom into your skin. Often, the initial irritation and pain from a sting can be neutralized by using a sting ointment, usually included in most first aid kits. People who receive multiple bee stings or are allergic can go into anaphylactic shock, which could cause swelling and obstruction of the airway and death. This is a real medical emergency, so call 911 immediately and begin CPR if required. Another tiny but potentially dangerous creature are ants. Many species of ants carry venom, and certainly everyone understands the potential hazard associated with ants, and in particular fire ants, but it's still important to mention. Be on the lookout for ant hills and avoid contact. Even small ant colonies can cause painful reminders of the presence of ants. A small ant bite from one of these ants caused this swelling and sore. If you are bitten or overrun by ants, the first aid treatment includes immediate removal of infested clothing and washing down the area to remove the ants. Clean the affected area using soap and water. Use ice packs to help reduce pain and inflammation and apply creams or lotions as recommended by your doctor. Call 911 if there are symptoms such as hives, swellings, chest pains, or medical emergency. Spiders seem to hide out in all sorts of areas. All spiders have venom. However, some species such as black widows, brown recluse, and others can be downright dangerous and a bite can result in a very serious or life-threatening situation. On the positive side, only a few species have a harmful bite to humans, either because they inject too little venom or their fangs cannot penetrate human skin. One of the most venomous is the black widow and only the shiny female poses a threat. However, she packs more danger in every drop of venom than any other creature in North America. The typical red hourglass shape on her abdomen helps identify her and she is found in every state but Alaska. Symptoms usually begin within 10 to 60 minutes of a bite and the pain can become intense. Severe muscular cramping often centers in the abdomen and back. Common reactions include headaches, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and heavy sweating. Other spiders can be potentially hazardous, such as the brown recluse, so it's best to avoid them all. If you are bitten and can find the site, 
Wash it and apply an antiseptic. Cooling the injury with ice if possible with water or wet compresses can help reduce the pain. Cold also reduces circulation which slows down the spread of venom. Medical attention should be obtained as soon as possible to control the effect of the venom. Ticks are a concern in just about every state and Lyme disease is caused by a bacterium transmitted to humans by the bite of infected ticks. Fortunately, most cases of Lyme disease can be treated successfully with antibiotics, but left untreated can be very serious indeed. Ways to prevent Lyme disease include avoiding areas where ticks may be lurking, using insect repellents containing DEET, and checking your clothing and skin carefully for ticks. Ticks prefer wooded, bushy areas with high grass and leaf litter. If a tick is attached to your skin for less than 24 hours, your chance of getting Lyme disease is extremely small. But just to be safe, remove the tick and monitor your health closely and be alert for any signs and symptoms of tick-borne illness. Now, let's spend some time on the subject of snakes. Each year in the U.S., several meter readers are bitten by venomous snakes. Again, meter boxes and other water system equipment can make a great home for snakes. With this in mind, never put your hand in a meter box without carefully checking first. Use your meter stick to open lids, not your bare hands. All snakes will bite when threatened or surprised, but most will usually avoid an encounter and only bite as a last resort. Most snakes are harmless, but unless you are absolutely sure that you know the species, treat it with extra care. Common venomous snakes found in the U.S. can include any of the following, such as numerous varieties of rattlesnakes, copperheads, cottonmouth or water moccasins, and coral snakes. Be sure to be able to correctly identify any snakes that may be native to your area. Most people bitten by snakes are bitten for one simple reason. They were silly enough to risk handling them. So do not be a hero. Back away and call for a professional to relocate any snakes you may find. Again, the rule is to look carefully where you walk and before you place your hand or any other body part where a snake may be hiding. And of course, never handle a snake. Even a non-poisonous species bite can result in an infection or at least a painful tetanus shot. By the way, remember, rattlesnakes do not always sound a warning prior to striking. Rattlesnake venom is highly destructive to human tissue, so immediate medical care is certainly in order for treatment and to prevent death. You may wonder why we did not mention first aid for snake bites. The most important thing is to follow your organization's procedures and the training you have received. But the best first aid tool for a snake bite is your cell phone. Call 911 for medical assistance immediately. We certainly haven't been able to cover all potential hazards for meter readers in this short program. This program has been intended as a review of the basics of meter reader safety. As you are well aware, working as a meter reader is not for the faint of heart, but by taking safety seriously and remaining alert, you can reduce or eliminate the chance of an injury. Your skills, knowledge, and dedication can go far in creating a safe workplace. If you have any questions, ask your supervisor and be sure to become familiar with your organization's safety policies and procedures. Thanks again for participating and have a great career. Thank you.